Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the user login API in a UI builder application with codeless logic. It will be very straightforward, just a single block that takes care of the user login. The starting point we will have will be the user registration page that we created in an earlier video. By the way, if you are uh, going through backendless missions and working on the user login API task, this video will provide exactly the instructions that you need to get this task done. And by the way, uh, if you are working on the missions, uh, you have already done the user registration, and this will be the very page that you created back for that task. Now, to get this started, let's create a copy of this page. If you're not familiar how to create copies of pages in UI Builder, select the page, move the mouse over the page name, and then click the new page button. And in here, in the create as drop down, select fork, and then select the actual page that you want to copy. And by the way, fork is a term that comes from Git uh, lingo. So here it's very applicable because we're essentially forking that page to create something different with it. Give it a name, user login will be the name of the new page click create and a new page will be created so let's just make some cosmetic changes such as changing the label in the header to user login uh, the button will need to change to login by the way the id for that button will be user login button uh, to remind you the input fields have data binding configured where here I selected email address and as you can see the value of the email address input field is bound to property called email address likewise the password input field has data binding for the value logic to the property called password the core of the logic is going to be in this button select the button go to the logic and in here we're using the uh, logic for registration this will go away and needs to be replaced with the login codeless block the login block will be under backendless in the users api here you will see two login blocks the one that we're interested in is uh, login user with identity password and the stay logged in parameter drag it out and by the way if you don't like this kind of linear layout you can do right click and then select external inputs so it's going to be exactly the same blog just changes the format a little bit for now uncheck return user connected to on click event and you can move these get property blocks uh, for email address goes to identity and then the password goes into password registration can go away technically this is it. This will log in the user. There is some magic that happens underneath. For example, once the user is logged in, the identity of that user will stay in your application. So whatever you do next will be executed specifically. Whatever you do next that comes uh, to integrating with the database will carry that user identity. So any user roles, any security domain that you establish in all the policies will be applicable and will be associated with a currently logged in user. Typically in an application, once the user is logged in, you will do something like uh, redirecting to a different page. Okay, so under app router, I got this go to page uh, block, but right now we don't need that. And in the current implementation, whenever the button is clicked, there will be no visual indications that the user is logged in. So let's add something just to indicate that the user is logged in. And for this, I will take the text block, put it in here. And this text block, I'll make it invisible to begin. And let's call it status text. And status text will have data binding to a property, for instance, log then user object ID. So this will be the property name that will contain logged in user object ID. And then once the user is logged in, we'll just have to put the logged in user uh, object ID into page data so the data binding kicks in. How do we do this? Well, login user, as you can see, can return the actual user. So let's create a variable called logged in user and then set the result of the login to that variable 
And the next thing that we will need to do is to take the object ID from that logged in user and put it into page data. And for this, we will use set property in page data. The property will be log, logged in user object ID. This is the property that our text value is bound to. And then the value will be get property from logged in user. This is our variable right here. We set the value here. We extract the value and the value will be object ID. That's it. So what happens here is we log in the user. We, the, re the result of this block goes into variable. And then from that variable, we extract object ID because it's going to be full blown user object with all the properties in it, except for password. Backendless will never return user's password. So we extract object ID, but we might as well, we could have uh, extracted email, name, whatever is available in that user record. But here we d I decided to use object ID. So that goes into page data and then uh, data binding will kick in. And then this text will display logged in user object ID. Let's run this page. And what I will do is I will use the credentials that are provided in the missions task to log in that user. So this will be the email address. And I'm going to copy the password that is in the missions and then click login and nothing happens. So let's see what is it that we didn't do. By the way, sometimes uh, errors do show up and I intentionally do not edit them out because you might be running into the same thing. And here's what happened here. By the way, the text block, I made it invisible, but I did not add the logic to make it visible. So let's fix that problem and under component toggle component visibility and then will be status text and we are going to make it visible set it to true and that surely will fix the problem so again let's use the same credentials and copy the password And click login so now we are getting the object id it did work the first time it's just the field with the object id was invisible but now it's working exactly as i intended and by the way if you uh, check the object id that we got here and then go to backend and select data and select users this is the user record and you scroll all the way to the object id you'll see that this value will be exactly the one that we got in here. So now a user is logged in and that will surely get the login user uh, with API task done in missions. I do hope you found this useful. The login user API and the functionality is, is very important. Uh, pretty much every single application that is out there will use it and I hope you will start applying this in your applications as well. Thank you for watching this video and as always, happy codeless coding.